Good morning, church family and friends. Thanks for being here today. My name is Russ. I am the student ministries pastor here at Essex Lions Church, and I'm just super thankful for you taking time out of your day to be here with me for this Devo. So, youth group's been really different these past couple months because of just being at home and not being able to be together. So we've been doing youth group over Zoom. A couple months ago, it was Cinco de Mayo, and I wanted to play one of my favorite Cinco de Mayo themed games. And uh, before this game, uh, I needed to have some sort of visual representation of horses. And um, you don't usually need these, but because it's Zoom, try to make it a little bit more uh, easy to imagine what's happening by cutting out some horses out of, uh, from paper. And I'm the least qualified person to cut horses out of paper. I come to find come to find out through this, um, but I did my best. And uh, this was my first attempt at cutting out a horse from a piece of paper, and I taped it to a uh, pencil so I can do this with it so it looks like it's galloping. As you can see it kind of just looks like a dog. Uh, I did my best though. This is my first try and uh, then I decided you know what maybe I'd be better at cutting out a horse if I looked at a picture of a horse at the same time. So I googled a picture of a horse and this was my second attempt. Right a little bit better. Gallops a little nicer. It looks like it's trotting or something. All right and then for my third horse I was like this one really has to blow, blow the other two horses away. I'm gonna Google a picture of uh, a horse with a flowing mane, right? And so I was staring at this picture the whole time I was cutting it out, and this is what I came up with. It's kind of a monstrosity. Uh, it's it's very thick. <laughs> um, so I am the least qualified person to cut out some horses, but I did my best. I tried really hard. Have you ever had a task that you've uh, that you've had to do where you were unqualified to even attempt it. Uh, that's, that's, that's one for me right there. I have a passage I want to share with you about these two guys who are completely unqualified for something and what happens when they did it. It comes from Acts. It's Acts chapter 4. Um, it's verses 1 through 22. Go check it out for yourself. Even go uh, back a couple chapters to see why this happens. Uh, it's a really awesome book. And... Um, uh, see what the Holy Spirit reveals to you. Read the whole thing for yourself. We're just going to read verses 1 through 22 of chapter 4. Uh, read along with me. So it goes like this. The priest and the captain of the temple guard and the Sadducees came up to Peter and John while they were speaking to the people. They were greatly disturbed because the apostles were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus in the resurrection of the dead. They seized Peter and John, and because it was evening, they put them in jail until the next day. But many who heard the message believed, and the number of men grew to about 5,000. The next day, the rulers, elders, and teachers of the law met in Jerusalem. And as the high priest was there, and so were Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and the other men of the high priest's family. They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them. By what power or what name did you do this? Then Peter, and, uh, then Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit. And said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a cripple and are asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel. It is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. It is the stone you, you builders rejected, which has become the capstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to by men which we must be saved. When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished, and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. But since they could see that the man who had been healed standing there with them, there was nothing they could say. So they ordered them to withdraw from the Sanhedrin and then conferred together. What we're going to do what are we going to do with these men they asked everyone living in Jerusalem knows that they have done an outstanding miracle and we cannot deny it but to stop this thing from spreading any further among the people we must warn these men to no longer speak to anyone in this in this name then they called them in again and commanded them to not speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus but Peter and John replied judge for yourselves whether it is right in God's eyes to obey you rather than God for we cannot help but speaking about what we have seen and heard. After further threats, they let them go. They could not decide how to punish them because all the people were praising God for what had happened. For the man, the man who was miraculously healed was over 40 years old. So that was a big passage, but the main reason why, going into why Peter and John were uh, seized in the first place, they're in jail in the first place, was because 
when they were entering the temple, they came across this crippled beggar who uh, I like how they point out he was, it was amazing because he's 40 years old. I think the amazing part was that he was crippled and now he's able, he's standing there with them uh, during this trial. Uh, so Peter and John heal this guy in the name of Jesus. And then to the onlookers, they preach in the first day, 3000 people come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah. And, and, and it's, Mind blowing, and then it goes in the passage that we just read that it, the next day it was five thousand. That's nuts, and so um, this is why the the experts, the Sadducees, um, the Sanhedrin need to take in um, Peter and John and figure out what's going down because these guys are supposed to be the experts, and they have no idea what's happening. So they need to they they they, um, they seize Peter and John. That's where we end up, and so what happens is Peter and John have to stand before. Uh, this panel of experts, the Sanhedrin, and uh, they're, they're going to be questioned. And it's really super intimidating. And it's not just because it's a panel of experts that have been studying their whole lives and um, that they know everything there is to know. It, it's, it's intimidating because the Sanhedrin have their own police force called the Temple Guard that the Romans allow them to have, because the, uh, the Romans are occupying Jerusalem, allow the, te the Temple Guard to exist that... Um, that the Sanhedrin gets to decide what the temple guard does. And so they have their own uh, police force. They, the Sanhedrin has had your, your friends killed in the past by what they, because of what they've claimed. And, um, uh, and the Sanhedrin are already on edge because of the recent surge in popularity of what you're proclaiming and, uh, and then what they've seen and heard themselves. They're disturbed. They're ready to be offended at what you say wrong. It's kind of comparable to, let's say today, we had a big panel of experts and collectors of Marvel comic books, and um, uh, but they have like murderous tendencies, and uh, they're questioning two guys, Pete and John, who say they've seen a couple of the uh, Marvel movies, and um, they're uh, they're gonna they're gonna talk about the Avengers, they're gonna tell you about the Avengers, they're gonna be questioning about the Avengers, and what uh, th their their lack of. Marvel lore and the overall story arc is offensive to this panel, right? And then uh, Pete and John might say things that are true, but because of their terminology or the fact they refer to Iron Man as Robert Downey Jr., um, the experts and collector collectors are going to have a hard time accepting what they're saying is true just because their terminology is funny or um, because they don't have this huge background that the collectors and experts have. Uh, so in this face of intimidation, going back to Peter and John, it, before the Sanhedrin, um, uh, all this intimidation is in front of them, and they call out the Sanhedrin for their wrongdoings, knowing that if they say the wrong thing, they can be killed. And then they tell the truth, too. They don't, they don't lie their way out, because they could, they could probably manage to talk their way out of the situation, saying there's some sort of ceremonial thing that happened, and, um, and find their way out of there unscathed. Uh, and this, the Sanhedrin know the situation and they're blown away by the guy's courage and they're blown away because they're courageous in front of this intimidation. And then they're just ordinary guys. They're uneducated guys. Um, so how were Peter and John able to be courageous and speak this way in the face of all this intimidation, though they were outmatched, they're uneducated, they're just ordinary. It's because right before they speak, it says Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit. So when Jesus went and he picked his disciples initially, he didn't go around asking for qualifications for people. When he, He'd go up to Peter and be like, hey, how'd you do on your uh, schooling over there? What, what, kind of, uh, what kind of experience do you have? Jesus didn't do that. Him picking Peter was the qualifier. So when Jesus went to go find his disciples, he went and he picked them, and that's what qualified them to be his disciples. It wasn't their qualifications, let them get picked. And... um. So uh, I'm sure over the years and over the different scenarios that Peter and John uh, found themselves in, they had doubts about their abilities and their qualifications because that's just, we all have that. When we find ourselves in different situations, we're like, man, you know what? This, I can't do this. This, this is beyond me. But, um, and, and I've met so many Peters and Johns who felt unworthy or unqualified uh, in my life, it, because of a lack of title or education or their history. Um, and, and they tell me, you know what, Russ, if you were just there or if someone more qualified was there, they could have done such a better job. 
But in reality, that's not true. In reality, most times I find myself among the Sanhedrin where I have the title. I'm a pastor. I have the education. I'm supposed to be an expert in the Bible and theology, which I'm not. It's mostly secret, so only tell like three to five people. Okay. Um, and, uh, and I'm finding myself in the Sanhedrin blown away by all the Peters and Johns that are in my life. Like Stephen Brian Libby, Liz Sinclair, Grady Small, Chris Toll, Noah Bonning. They make me want to know Jesus the way they know Jesus, by the way they speak, they teach, and they live. But what qualifies them to speak, teach, and live uh, boldly when they're probably living with doubts? The same Holy Spirit who was with Peter and John standing before the Sanhedrin that also enabled them to heal that, heal that, uh, the crippled beggar, enabled them to preach and have 3,000 people come to know Jesus as the Messiah, um, is with them. He's with you, the believer. And he's enabling you and equipping you, equipping, <laughs> equipping you to do God's special holy purposes in your life. So when I cut out these beautiful horses, right? <laughs> I'm the least, and I still, I, I, I was, and still am the least qualified person to probably cut out some paper horses. But do you know who's still talking about these paper horses more than two months after the fact? It's not just me right now, right? The kids love talking about these. They've had a way bigger impact than I could have ever imagined when I just went to go cut out some quick horses. If you have a task or a scenario ahead of you where you feel unqualified or unworthy to do it, you have everything you need. The Holy Spirit is with you. Guys, thank you so much for being here. I pray that you'd see the Holy Spirit working in your life this week and especially today. See ya.